Hello, I'm Eric Nersessian, and I'm presenting research on interdisciplinary collaboration approaches on undergraduate virtual reality technology projects. The other authors on this paper are Dr. Margarita Vinikov, Jessica Ross Nersessian, and Dr. Michael Lee. We're all from the Department of Informatics at New Jersey Institute of Technology in Newark, New Jersey. So here at NJIT, uh, we have an undergraduate program of computer science and digital design, and this presents interesting teaching challenges at the crossroads of these computing and design curriculums for interactive computing projects such as gaming and augmented virtual reality as AR VR development. We have found that project-oriented studio classes integrating computing and design students on emerging technology projects have led to positive learning outcomes for both types of students. We found that educational approaches must keep pace with advancing state of technology and that this helps ensure that our students have the necessary skills for the modern workforce. So finding that this computer science education provides interesting cross-sections of challenges to STEM education, we like to explore these areas to find effective alternative teaching methods. This paper presents our cross-class collaboration method and presents some student surveys and final presentations. We find that it is a necessary class structure to successfully educate future developers and designers and we wish to share our teaching experiences with the larger STEM educational community. Interdisciplinary approaches to teaching STEM and CS subjects to non-STEM students are needed. Integrating both STEM and non-STEM students with collaboration on emerging technology projects have been a successful application for us. We wish to bring these benefits to non-STEM students that require these basic CS education for their employment needs. This collaborative pedagogical process mirrors real-world software engineering and design that better prepares the students for the workforce. So there's been a lot of previous research in this area that has shown interesting techniques for teaching STEM to non-STEM students. We've seen research teams that have created a process to aid underrepresented STEM minorities to improve enrollment and retention in the computer science degree. Some previous research has used simulated technologies to aid student comprehension of STEM topics. And others have used virtual reality to focus on engaging art aspects of STEAM, STEM plus art, with experiential learning to recruit females to STEM. We've seen increased interest in CS to non-CS students using mixtures of virtual reality, art, and animation, and other teams have focused on building a learning model to teach computer science to non-CS liberal arts students in Japan. So based on this educational research that we've seen, we have built our own collaboration between computing and interaction design students here in our undergraduate program. Students from both classes meet to pitch their ideas and help recruit from the other classes. So the design students will come and pitch and recruit from the computing and vice versa. Students from both classes sought out cross-disciplinary team members after these pitches. And although collaboration was not required, it was highly encouraged. Both computing and design classes were structured around AR VR projects as they are the, the emerging technologies that both sides are extremely interested in pursuing. Extensive planning and regular communication between both instructors were needed to maintain mutual awareness of each class's progress and difficulties. To maintain a rigid class structure to achieve these deliverables throughout the semester, both instructors met weekly to discuss individual class objectives. These instructors worked together to set up their design sprints. 
Student groups exchanged uh, availability information to schedule in-person meetings and used messaging platforms such as Slack and Discord to maintain communications outside the class time. Deliverables from both classes were organized using Google Drive folders. And the learning management system Canvas was used by both instructors to organize project milestones into weekly chunks or deliverables. Announcements and assignment submissions were also done through Canvas. So the final deliverables from the classes were different, but the, the teams had to work together to achieve them. For the computing class, they had to complete an augmented or virtual reality application and then conduct user testing and deliver that report. The design class had to complete this augmented and virtual reality application that they may have collaborated on with the computing class, but then they had to showcase it at the demo hall expo at the end of the semester as seen in this image. This demo hall expo was for the design students to demo the work from to show to classmates, family, and friends with, to show their finished projects at the end of the semester. And several groups did maintain this collaborative effort throughout the semester and were actually able to deliver a functioning demo at this demo hall. Computing students who maintained collaboration on these group projects accompanied fellow design students who were on the same project at this expo. And this expo served as a reminder of what was possible when a lot of work went into achieving this collaboration across the technical and creative students. At the end of the semester, we also uh, delivered a survey to both classes. And the survey was designed as a questionnaire, 10 questions, as you can see on the right-hand side. Each question was ranked with a five-point Likert-type scale. Um, you can see that the questions are numbered and all the questions begin with what impact did collaboration have on and your learning, exposing you to new ideas, expanding your knowledge base and so on. Uh, the next three rows have to deal with the averages. So we have the design class average per question, the computing class average per question, and then the difference between the classes. So for example, for question one, you see a positive difference from the design class compared to the computing class of almost a point, three quarters of a point more. And then the following three columns have to deal with the standard deviation. Now, we saw that there were differences between these classes and that the average difference on these questions was about a half a point. If you look down at the last row in the middle column there. And the design class in general had higher, more positive responses with this average response being a half a point more out of five points. Um, and at the end, open-ended responses were asked and gathered as a type of qualitative metric. Now this chart might be easier to, or this table might be easier to digest as a chart here. So on the left-hand side, part of the table is still being shown. It shows our 10 questions and the average um, of the 10 questions, and then it writes out each of those questions. And on the right-hand side, you can see a chart listing out the two classes, averages and standard deviations. So we have 10 questions um, along the horizontal axis and the average of those questions, and then the point numbers on the side. So the design class average is blue, uh, the computing class average is orange, and the design class standard deviation is in gray, and the computing class standard deviation is in yellow. So you can see general trends that the design class average is higher than the computing class, um, and they seem to be about the same for question six, with computing class a bit more on question seven. Question six deals with your interest in technology and engineering. They're equal. Question seven says, how has this impacted your knowledge in tech and engineering? And so the computing class having the, the more comfort level of dealing with tech and engineering has a slightly higher response. But across the board, and you can see at the average at the end, that the design class did have a slightly stronger responses. So based on those open-ended responses at this type of 
qualitative metric. We had uh, gathered the responses and we uh, 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 themed them and we had some positive feedback and we had some negative feedback. So comments that dealt with positive feedback included critical constructive feedback that were very helpful for the instructors to improve the collaboration of future classes. The positive comments evolved around uh, happiness that of their, their final deliverables and how their projects came out throughout the semester. Um, other positive comments revealed that the students found it interesting to work with the other students who had different perspectives. The designers liked working with the programmers, the programmers liked working with the designers. Some groups formed friendships across the two classes, and those friendships actually quite a bit talked about uh, continuing these collaborations past, in this case it was the fall semester, but moving into the winter and spring. But it was just showing that once they cross those thresholds of having to learn the other culture, the other language, the other profession, they found it very enjoyable and very inspiring to continue their collaboration. And there was also negative feedback that we have to take into consideration to improve. These negative comments include uh, missing deadlines, uh, miscommunications across the students and instructors, and unclear expectations either from the instructors to the students or from the students across the classes. Communication proved to be the biggest obstacle in this cross-collaboration and the most feedback we got on the negative side. Um, those included unclear definition of milestones and goals, preconceived assumptions of difficulty levels or length of time of deliverables from the other side at the other class, and students from the other class at different backgrounds not truly understanding or appreciating what goes into the, the other side's work and deliverables. And this led to a lot of interpersonal conflicts across the, some of the teams um, that the instructors had to deal with. So in conclusion, um, at our undergraduate computing and design curriculum, we, we've des designed a collaborative curriculum over these last few years. And this has, has involved having the computing and the design students work in a cross-class collaboration projects, which has been difficult yet highly rewarding experience for both the instructors and the students. And every year we, we improve how these classes function and the uh, curriculum gets designed and we have an informally observed that we've improved year after year. And this is our first time that we've tried to document and measure any type of quantitative or qualitative metric upon it. So our work shows that uh, cross collaboration is a necessary class structure in this type of uh, interdisciplinary software development environment. And it's successfully helping to educate our future developers and designers, and it produces rewarding results for our students and instructors. Thank you.